Good evening and thank you for joining us on Core TV News on the R. I am Ebrilomo Adekunle. Nigeria's military size Gaza is now the only town still under the control of Boko Haram in the northeast. This, according to the military high command, is the situation after troops flushed out insurgents from Bama in Bruno State after days of fighting. Spokesman for the Defense Headquarters, Major General Chris Lukolade, said in a statement that troops are brazen up for the final onslaught in Gwoza. He also disclosed that the Nigerian Air Force has stepped up its air bombardment of identified targets in Gwoza and Sambisa Forest, preparatory to other phases of the mission. In the same vein, Nigerian troops have forced out Boko Haram insurgents from their last stronghold in Yobe State. Defense headquarters said through its Twitter feed that soldiers reclaimed Goneri on Monday morning. The latest breakthrough came a few days after the military flushed out insurgents from Adamawa State. President Goodluck Jonathan has again called on Nigerians to show support for the military in appreciation of their efforts in the fight against Boko Haram. He was speaking at the presidential villa at a brief presentation of monetary support by a well-meaning citizen to the Nigerian armed forces just before the security meeting in Abuja. The president expressed delight at the gesture and maintained that the military deserves honor and respect instead of abusers. It's a very positive uh, thing that Nigerians are beginning to respond and respect or want to support the armed forces. Uh, we felt that what the president has been saying, that this war is not for military, it's for all of us. And uh, this one is not an organization, but as an individual, he chose to make the donation on, on behalf of his wife. Who shall risk his life or our life future prospects every day to defend others? Only men and women of honor will do that. Who will stay awake in the raging storms so that others, old, young, weak, pregnant women, and vulnerable, will have blissful rest. Only sincere patriots will do that. Ironically, in Nigeria, we scorn, we accuse, we despise our nation builders, while we respect to get a strong country. But it's only when we honor our inconspicuous great men and women in uniform who will ever build the Nigeria of our dreams. My wife and I, Humbly present, seek your indulgence first to present this token amount. Chiefs of Defense Staff of Nigeria, Chad and Nigel, have resolved to establish a structure for joint planning to enhance ongoing counterterrorism operations in the Northeast. This is with a view to consolidate on the successes so far achieved as well as accelerate the tempo of operations. The defense chiefs from the three West African countries also resolved to establish a joint operations headquarters pending any other structure being put in place at regional and international organizations level. 
Spokesman for the Defense Headquarters, Major General Chris Ulukolade, said in a statement that the modified arrangement is to enhance operational and tactical coordination as well as synchronize command and communication in the field. He says the structure will operate in cognizance of existing bilateral and multilateral documents and understanding among the countries. The meeting also resolved to enhance correct reportage of the ongoing counterterrorism operation. An FCT I court sitting in Gudu, Abuja, was on Monday thrown into commotion following a failed attempt by operatives of the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission to arrest the former presidential candidate Emmanuel Okereke. Okereke and one Ishmael Chinyere are being prosecuted by the EFCC for offenses bordering on impersonation, forgery and criminal conspiracy amounting to the tune of one billion naira. They are also accused of occupying false public offices as Director General and Director FCT Command of National Task Force on Small Weapons. At the resumed hearing of the case, Justice Abubakar Talba adjourned till May 4th due to the absence of the main prosecution witness. EFCC operatives consequently attempted to arrest Okereke on the court premises. Let them invite me. Let them invite me. On, invite me. Lie to me, I will come. If you give it to me here, if, if, if you need to do it on paper, on pieces of paper, I will go with you. We don't want to make the violent constitution. That's what happened. Let, 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 let me to tell you. Let we, me have, we have an issue. For you. Come and let us have your No, no there's no issue. If there's an issue, somebody. They have, have, have the, all of them will leave. No, no, all of them somebody, will leave. Somebody, somebody. Only will leave. All of them. That's what I've come so personally. Somebody it's between only me and you. Yes, somebody must be in the petition. If somebody's in the petition, you will invite me and say, come and defend this petition. You invite me, say, come and defend the allegation against me. I will come and clear. You, 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 have, you, 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 have, you have not been earlier invited? Nobody. I, I, I spoke to my, my, my life. Nobody. This is something very strange. No, 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 no invitation, no telephone call, no nothing. You can just consider this. The matter today was let down for hearing. By hearing, I mean uh, the prosecutor, that's the EFCC, is to fill their witness, L you know, lead them in chief. At the end of the day, uh, the defense will cross-examine. But the prosecutor sought an adjournment on the ground that uh, he had not been able to meet with the IPO, who really did... Uh, the IPO was the person, according to him, who dealt with the matter. This is a matter of 2012. For him to come to court and table before the court that is yet to have a pretrial meeting with the with his uh, with the IPO. The the court, of course, uh, discountenanced such ground for adjournment, and then only adjourned the matter based on the fact that the court felt that he said he had some uh, other additional uh, proof of evidence he intends to file. So court was like, okay, let me give you leave to do that, and not on the ground that you've not been able to meet with your witness who you were supposed to have seen since 2012. So adjournment was granted on that ground. And for us, the defense, it didn't go down well with us. We were not happy because we are desirous of having the matter expeditiously dealt with. President Goodluck Jonathan is presiding over a Security Council meeting attended by heads of all security agencies and top government functionaries in Abuja. Chairman of the Independent National Electoral Commission, Atairu Jega, is also attending the meeting, which is expected to touch upon INEC's preparation for the forthcoming general elections. The meeting, which started a few minutes uh, after 11 a.m., also had Vice President Namad Sambo and Secretary to the Government of the Federation, Ayim Pius Ayim, in attendance. Former Speaker of the House of Representatives, Gali Umar Naaba, is now a member of the Board of Trustees of the All Progressives Congress. This was after he formally announced his defection to the opposition party within few days of opting out of the People's Democratic Party. 
Nava was received into APC by a high-profile team of party chieftains led by National Chairman John Odige Oyego. The former speaker, who resigned his membership of the PDP on Sunday, explained that the ruling party has lost focus and is not in a position to fulfill its electoral promise to Nigerians. And on its part, the APC chairman said the party was looking forward to receiving more defectors from a party which he insists is in disarray. ECOWAS has now fully deployed its 17-member long-term election observation mission to Nigeria to monitor the rescheduled elections. This was after 11 of the observers arrived to join their colleagues who were ready in Abuja. The commission said in a statement that the first batch of regional observers returned to Nigeria on March 2nd following the postponement of the elections earlier stated for February 14th and 28th. The long-term observation team is part of the larger 250-strong ECOWAS election observation mission headed by former Ghanaian President John Kufo, appointed by the president of the ECOWAS Commission, Kadri Wadrogo, to monitor the Nigerian elections. It's the Core TV News on the hour. We take a short break and return with more stories. Please don't go away. Every day, every hour, and every minute, news break in Nigeria. Things happen so fast, it's most times difficult to track and comprehend them. But that's what we do right here on DJ360. 2015, would you want to come back again? It's like asking Jesus Christ if he knew he was going to die, will you, come, will you want to come back as the savior of the world again? We do not just help you track the stories, we break them down. Explore all the angles, analyze the issues so that you can fully comprehend the stories and use them to make the right decisions. Welcome back and for more information you can reach us on our social media platforms. On Facebook, facebook.com forward slash core TV news. Our Twitter handle at core TV news ng. And on YouTube, youtube.com forward slash core TV, leave a space then news. The chairman of the Independent National Electoral Commission, Atayuru Jaga, says the fire that guarded the commission's warehouse at the weekend will not affect the March 28th and April 11th elections. Speaking during a town hall meeting, Jaga disclosed that the materials that were affected were those of 2011 and had no connection with the 2015 elections. He maintained that the fire was as a result of a spark from the distribution panel when power was restored to the area. Uh, on a Saturday night, uh, there was a fire outbreak in our central store here in Abuja. Um, there was, I mean, this is a common thing that many people are aware. Uh, there was no general electricity, and when they brought back the light, there was a spark in one of the distribution panels. And that distribution panel caught fire, and it was around 11 p.m. at night. Uh, but we mobilized and got the support of the fire service. And uh, within a period of one hour, the fire was uh, co controlled. Um, some 2011 old stock of electoral materials, primarily handbags for election officials and envelopes were destroyed. No material relating to the preparations for the 2015 general elections was affected in the fire incidents. And that was why in order to minimize speculation, we ourselves Sunday morning contacted the media and informed them. Nobody knew that this had happened. But we contacted them, notified them, organized a tour where we showed them this is what happened, this is the extent of the damage. It has not affected uh, any preparation for the 2015 general election. And that was the opportunity they had to take photographs. But still some of them have gone ahead to make sensational reporting out of it. But I can assure you that it was unfortunate that happened. You know, it was contained. There are some materials who are destroyed, but there were 2011 excess materials that had not been cleared out of the store. Even that, it was minimal, you know, and it therefore has no effect on the 2015 uh, preparations for the election. The last
last has yet to be heard of moves to remove the INEC chairman, Atairu Jega, as members of the Odua People's Congress, together with some legations under the umbrella of concerned citizens of Nigeria, have asked for the removal of Jega. Patience Ajiboye has more in this report. Following the recent statement made by OPC leader Danny Adams that INEC chairman Atahiru Jaga be removed before the elections, saying he is unfit to conduct credible elections, members of the group in Lagos have followed suit with an anti Jaga protest, carrying placards from Seven Up Toll Gate area to the National Stadium, where they staged a protest asking that a new electoral umpire be appointed to conduct the 2015 elections. The protest actually is about um, ensuring that we get credible elections. We want to not um, just voting. We want to protect our votes and ensure that this time around we are not rigged out or there's no foul play at all. And then secondly, we're clamoring for Jega's removal because it is apparent from every quarter that Jega has compromised. So we are saying no to any form of compromise. We are saying Jega must go so that we can have credible elections. But you know, for us in London, we are not, you are, you are not a state in Nigeria. We are not the second citizen of Nigeria. Everybody has the right in Nigeria because we are born and thrown in Nigeria. We, 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 we all do our people congress. We all be you. The old people you know, we now want Jaga, we now want Bola Tinobo, we now want Buhari. Uh, Jaga had plenty of time to make laudable structures. People shouldn't be looking for their PVC everywhere. If you were given that amount of time to do the PVC and share because the structure you brought up, the, the postal system of Nigeria is supposed to have been developed. Now people should be able to go to post offices to pick up their post uh, PVCs. Even if they get to where they registered and they are not there, you get to the post office, you pick up your PVC, you sign and there you get it. So all the time that Jaga was given, what is it meant for? That is why we women too, we are concerned. We are, we are here, we are standing for such. The protest group also showed the support for candidates of the People's Democratic Party. If you, if you, if you can see it, actually all people is, uh, is member of the People Congress. They are they like one favorite uh, to follow uh, President Jonathan, uh, President Ibili. Good luck, Jonathan. Now you can see many people here, and many people come out to, 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 to show that they love the half of Nigeria. All, all people, the ICN, uh, PC, or PDP, all we are one. But we need the right person that can make Nigeria good. That is what they call the President Good luck, Jonathan. To get a second time, to change Nigeria as close as once. This man just started. I'm going to go in far away. Let us, let us give you a chance to, to, to see what he's doing. Leader of the group, Ghani Adams, who also led the rally, said he is concerned about the continued failure of the electoral umpire. Gallery 28. We realize about 6 million Southwest have not got their PVC. In the Southeast, about 22% haven't got their PVC. South 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 about 25 percent, and the election is just 11 days to go. So we are calling on President Gulo Jonathan to remove him immediately. He should proceed to terminal leave on the 24th of this month, so that a credible person can organize this election. Meanwhile, road users had their own unfair share of the exercise, as the traffic buildup created by the protest went as far as beggar bus stop while there were also allegations of destruction of billboards and banners with APC logo or candidates on it. Patience Ajiboye, Core TV News, Lagos. And in reaction to that report, members of the National Coordinating Council of the Old War People's Congress, OPC, the highest ruling body of the organization, have dissociated themselves from the group and described as shameful, destructive, violent and reactionary. The activities of the Ghani Adams-led faction of the Odua People's Congress. They said what was witnessed in Lagos was the highest level of political violence sponsored and funded by certain elements in the Jonathan government, maintaining that Ghani Adams is on his own and does not enjoy the support of a large size of their membership spread across the country. 
The members accused Adams of unleashing terror on innocent citizens, saying it is not a people-oriented advocacy. They asserted that the Yorubas are politically sophisticated people and will simply ignore opportunists like Ghani Adams, renouncing him and his activities who are against the larger Yoruba interests. They, however, called on Yorubas to be vigilant politically at that time of and concluded that Nigeria needs a leadership, a new direction, and a country that works. Deputy Senate President Ike Kwerimadu is soliciting the support of the United Nations Development Program, UNDP, and its partners towards capacity building for incoming lawmakers. This, according to him, is because the National Assembly will witness several newcomers with little or no experience. Senator Kurimadi spoke during a strategic meeting between the National Institute for Legislative Studies, NILS, and the UNDP Democratic Governance for Development, DGD project team in Abuja. The senator, who also chairs the governing council of NILS, said pre-inauguration capacity building for the next legislature was imperative, especially given the high turnover of lawmakers across the country. He noted that the exercise would be required between the end of the elections and the inauguration of the new parliament to enable the incoming lawmakers interact with the old ones. The deputy senate president also assured the international community that Nigeria was committed to credible elections that will be free, fair and peaceful. In his remarks, the project director of the DGD, Mutada Deme, spoke of UNDP's readiness to always partner with the National Assembly to deepen Nigeria's democracy. The relations of a young man, Chibeke Ede, who until his death was a housekeeper with a Prote Hotel in Benin City, have staged a protest calling for justice over what the term is killing by the police with the complicity of the Prote Hotel management. A correspondent filed in this update on the story. The family of the late Chibeke Ede, a 26-year-old housekeeper with Protea Hotel in Benin City, who hails from Unkanu, East Local Government Area of Enugu State, says he was detained on the orders of the management of the Protea Hotel Benin for alleged theft of 48,000 naira. According to the family spokesman, Ernest Unwobodo, the late Chibeke was arrested last Friday and the family also confirmed his well-being on Saturday morning, only to be told by the police later same day that he had been released on bail. His body, according to Ernest, was later discovered in the mortuary of the University of Benin Teaching Hospital. The money we had was 42,000. CSO said it was 8,000. I want to copy the money. We are coming back to pay the 14,000. The family, after leaving the NUJ Secretariat, took their protest right to the doorstep of the Protea Hotel, where they were met by the Benin Area Command, Musa Uba. Mother of the deceased, Christiana Ede, called on the state government to help her in bringing her son's murderers to justice. Before my children go back to Arakira, they say my son is not there at the station. They wait, wait, they say they don't already bear command. They don't care to go to uh, the office for hotel or the They wait, 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 no better answer again. I call them, call them, call them. They say they this uh, certificate, my son's name there again. If you don't want to read that, I see my son's name on notice board. Certificate. They told me to go and buy this in this two detail number eighteen. Two detail and a jig and a two toilet food. And may I go and buy food for them? They bring it come out and give their food. I didn't say anything. We already bought us with white color. Earlier, Olariwaju Eindero of the Operation Thunderstorm 
urged the aggrieved protesters not to take laws into their hands, assuring that the police will investigate and ensure that the corporates do not go scot-free. <laughs> The management of Protea Hotel, however, did not comment on the issue. Quite sad a story. And that is where we would wrap up this news on the hour for this time. Join us again top of the hour for more. Many thanks for watching. I am Ibn Lomo Adikuli.